Hello. My name's Gareth and welcome to Fat Pigeon Audio Reviews, where as you can see, we're in Audio Lounge Leicester's little demo room again. With these fancy shiny bits that's with angles and helps with musicality. Now the first thing you notice about the Hegel, uh, H95, Hegel, I just don't know. I'm going to call it a Hegel because it's spelled H-E-G-E-L. So I'm going to call it a Hegel. Maybe it is Hegel. I know uh, American guys out there uh, do call it the Hegel and a few people here call it Hegel. But uh, it, he, it says Hegel to me. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to call it the Hegel. So the Hegel H95. Large display on it. This is one of those displays you can see from quite a good distance away. It actually says about the, it says about the input, coaxial, optical, that sort of thing. And then it has your volume increments there in numbers 20, 21, 22, up to 100 which is great. It has your select button here on the left hand side to select those said sources and obviously that's your volume control there on the right hand side. And it's got a DAC as well, a DAC chip built in, a digital to analog converter in there which sounds... I love the sound signature of these, I do, and that's why I want to get on the channel because this is sort of that little gem again that I always say about. Uh, lots of things come here through the shop uh, and if it stands out to me I've got to sort of put it on the channel and this really did stand out. Now this retails at £1,500 here in the UK and it, I think personally, it's sort of punching above it. So let me, I'll get back to the, I'll get back to the sound quality in a few moments. So this is a 60 watt amplifier, two channel, 60 watts per channel across eight ohms. Now I've been doing some research and I couldn't find a four ohm rating for it, but apparently within the actual website itself, it does say it can get down to two ohms. So that 60 watts of power inside there, I sort of don't know what it's doing. Cause when I've been listening to this and demoing this with different sets of speakers, that it seems like it's got more than 60 watts. I don't know what they're doing inside the amplifier and what they're doing to that 230 volts here in the UK, 110 in America. I don't know what they're doing to that voltage because they're sort of, well, amplifying it. No, they're sort of, it's a very clean signal and it sounds more powerful than 60 watts. Don't get me wrong, I can't compete with the, that's what the wattage is, it's 60 watts a channel, I get that. But it just seems like a little bit more. So on the back, it has a line output, a variable line output with RCAs. It has an analog one and an analog two, again, with RCAs. Then it has your four binding posts, very well made, quite thick, sturdy plastic over the metal binding posts itself. And they've got a lovely size hole. When you, you know when you undo them and put sort of speaker cable in there, it's got a nice chunky hole in there. So you can actually get some thicker cable in there to bite down with that thread. And it's also got a digital coax, an optical, in fact it's got three opticals on the back, a USB and a network cable. And also obviously your, your kettle lead there for your 230 volts here in the UK. Now the network on the back that I've been reading up with the specifications is that that's for updates. They want to keep this future proofed as it were, the Eagle H95. They want to be able to do updates all the time. So if you every now and again or always plug that sort of ethernet into the back of it, it will always be sort of kept up to date. Also on the front it's got the 6.25 millimeter headphone jack as well which again plug it straight in there's your volume control sit on a nice leather chair maybe or right next to the amplifier have that corded string for your headphones i love that cord on big old chunky headphones and plug it in and away you go you can listen to it straight there from the device itself now the sound quality is why it's on the channel yes it's got these knobs on it and it does sources and it's got digital inputs and analog inputs and it's got a nice display like we said before but the reason i've put it on the channel today is because for £1,500, honestly, I haven't got access to every sort of amplifier in the world, obviously. I have access to the stuff that they sort of have here at Audio Lounge Leicester. And thank you to Audio Lounge Leicester. I spoke to Mark the other day here for Audio Lounge Leicester. In fact, he came to me and he says, Gareth, I want to help your channel. I want to help everybody out there. The sort of guy he is. And he says, I tell you what, like with the instance for the Hegel 95 or the Kef R3s or anything I've sort of had on the channel here that we stuck at the shop, he said, if they name drop Fat Pigeon Audio Reviews, 
and say, I've watched this review on Fat Pigeon, right? I'd like to have a listen to one. He actually said he'd give you 10% off. So you get a 10% voucher literally for name dropping. All you've got to do is come in and say, oh yeah, I watched this video from Fat Pigeon Audio Reviews. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And then it will literally knock 10% off for you. So I thought I'd just get that in there. Just in case you're in the area, and just in case you're, it's 10% off if you name drop me for products that we have here in the shop. So like I was saying, we don't, I don't have access to lots and lots of amplifiers, but the amplifiers that we do have here, around the 2,000 pound mark, 1,500 pound mark, this has just got them, this is punching above its weight. Um, the way it grips hold of bass, and how it just controls everything at that lower end frequency, but it's still energetic. It's still got this refinement to it. I've been doing some research. Obviously, I do a little bit of research so I know it's 60 watts a channel, things like that. I don't go massively into it. I'll put all that on the screen for you so you can see exactly what the specs are. Now, what they're saying is that it's a neutral sounding amplifier and they are absolutely spot on. It is a very neutral sounding amplifier. They don't, certain amplifiers add a bit of bass, take a bit of treble away make it bright things like that i know it's also down to the speaker as well of course it is but that's why you have to get sort of the right pairing that's why the r3s were great last week because they sort of went with everything like i said before but with this amplifier nothing's been added or taken away it is just completely neutral like other people say i understand that i do understand that but it's got this the, the sort of information it sends out, the detail that this can produce from the amplifier itself, just sort of brings a speaker to its sort of full potential um, at this price point, at the £1,500. I'm sort of, I know there's a lot of people out there, oh, this will be it, this will be it. But until you've heard it, if you have heard this, then absolutely drop me on and say, actually, this beats it at £1,500. Because something in the shop here, I can't really find anything that's just got that detail and refineness and the sparkle that I sort of crave. I crave that higher end sparkle, the holographic sound. Now, I've got a Name Nate Excess second hand one at home. Now, when I put them side by side, I A and B them together. I know it's not, a lot of you will be shouting, oh, I've got a fair comparison, it's 10 years old. But, but, when I put this on, because I've always been very happy with the name, but when I put the Eagle on, this, this Eagle on in its place, with the speakers that I have at the moment, everything just opened up. Now, I didn't realise that the name Nate XS had a sort of a narrow sound. It may just be my speakers, it may be my setup, it could be my area again. This is different for everybody. But within my living space, where I listen to my music, I put the Eagle on and boom! Everything was wider. The sound stage got bigger. Everything was quite energetic. Now, and when I say energetic, it doesn't mean bright. It's, it's a fun sounding amplifier. But again, it's, it's that neutral sound that nothing's being added. And the information that this amp can send to your speakers with detail and mid-range was quite surprising to me. Tracks that I'd heard before, I know I say this a lot, but everything became more open. Like I said before, this sound stage just became a whole lot bigger. I put on a vinyl record. I put on Close to Me by Susan Wong. It's a, it's a beautiful, she's got a beautiful sounding voice. And she does covers. She does Man in the Mirror from Michael Jackson, but a slower paced, beautiful sort of recreation of it. And the sort of how precise everything was. And every now and again, I, I could hear her taking a breath. Now, you can hear, I could hear it before, I know it sounds silly. I could hear that breath before, but not as pronounced, not as sort of vivid in my mind. This, and you think, oh, wait, what? And, I, and I, sort, I sort of moved the needle back. I wanted to listen to it again. And like I say, it was more pronounced. This detail, the information that the Eagle sends out to speakers, seems like it's a lot more than other amplifiers. Now, when I mentioned before that I've put it up against a lot of different amplifiers, this is sort of punching above its weight. This could have been sold at around £2,000, because I think that's where its competitors are. About £2,000. £500 more than this. There's been a certain amplifier in here that I actually tried that's around £2,000 with a streamer in it and it destroyed it. It destroyed that amplifier. Now it's £500 cheaper and it's just got this richness to it. This is it's, when I put the vinyl on like I say it's, it's it's a delicate sound and it's so it's just so it's it's got these delicate notes in there. And it's coping with these delicate notes. Now, when, when you bring the volume down on this, you can put it down to quite a low volume, but you still get all that detail. Don't get me wrong, that's also due to speakers, but you still get that, that, 
that sort of ringing of guitars and the cymbal aftertones, it's still there at low volumes. Now, I had a system before uh, with an RCAM and my, my fine audio speakers where I had to hit level 42. I used to call it level 42 because it was a band as well. But I had to hit this to, to make the speakers come alive. Now, with this amplifier, I've sort of, I don't know if I've got different speakers, but with this amplifier, it paired well with the speaker. I have, at the moment, at home, um, I have some Martin Logan ESLs. And they're a big panel with an eight-inch drive at the bottom. They're a hybrid. And that sound is just what I need. That, I'm going to do a review on those because they are... I mean, I've chosen those ones because they're just holographic height imagery separation fantastic and there's no different when i put this on those speakers holy poop i sort of think oh my god what are these speakers capable of i knew the speakers were good and i knew i was always going to upgrade the amplifier but with this amplifier you think wow for 1500 pounds i did not expect it to do what it did to my speakers again i know i keep coming back to that information it's tr it's trying to get this information out what i've had to do is like i said with the r3s this was the amplifier where i sort of turned them out a bit i towed them out a little bit more it didn't need to be as direct because i was getting such a nice sound stage from them there was width to it airiness to it this on the esls at home blew my mind uh, and again, and when I swapped them A to B, the how open everything was and more refined and airy and detail and holographic. Um, but with that power, the power is driving the drivers, the main hybrid driver, the 8-inch driver on my speakers, like I sort of, I hadn't heard before. It controlled it beautifully, gripped hold of everything, fast paced. It made my speakers better and I thought they were good before. And I put Nick Cave on, it's called Gallon Ship. Um, one of the tracks on there and his vocals it was so high such a high image but so, the realism that you get from this amplifier now I've heard that track a lot through the speakers I have in my system at home and I know I keep referring back to my system at home but that's where I've listened to this amplifier the most at the moment I borrowed it as soon as it came in I wanted to do a review on it so when we had it here it was like what so I took it home and I had to play with it for the for the whole weekend and I've not done anything else apart from listening to music and again this nick oh my the the strings the strings are wide the width to this but the separation that this can create it's on the on the sort of name amplifier i've been running before it is quite narrow and stuff seems to not mush together it does have a separation but this just opens everything up and it pulls everything apart and it makes more separate these layers in between different instruments of silence and the separation is absolutely astonishing the highs like i say his his vocals and the mids are literally high up in the sky. The imaging is very high up. About six foot, I was thinking. Uh, which is about where I'm pretty sure, I don't know how, where, how tall Nick Cave is, but that's where I picture him being and his vocals. And you can sort of see him and you can hear his breath, like I said, like the Suzanne Wong thing. It's got more information being sent to my speakers. But that neutral realism sound that you're getting from the Hegel, Hegel amplifier, I didn't sort of know it was out there. I lean towards that name mid-range. I quite liked it. But a lot of people told me it had like a colourful effect and it had little bits added. But I didn't sort of care if it was colourised by anything. I like that sort of signature sound. But now with the Hegel, with that neutral purity that's not adding anything, it's just raw from the singer's voice, it sounds like, to your speakers. And I thank God every day that different speakers do different things. Different amps, everything does a different thing. You gotta remember, if every amplifier was the same, we'd all just be sitting with one amplifier and one set of speakers, and thank God everything's different, because you can sort of narrow it down to your exact taste of music, your exact signature that you want to hear. And I'm honestly, I honestly think, I love the 9000 amplifier. I did, uh, the Audio Lab 9000 amplifier is still fantastic at £2,000. It's a warm mids, forward sounding amplifier. But then this one, this 95 is punching, packing. That 60 watts sort of doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it, it powers speakers that it shouldn't. It powers uh, magna pants. Again, because it can get down to that two ohms that it states in the actual specification. And it can. It's powered some little LRSs that we have here in the shop. And it powered them beautifully. It powered them well. 
That's 60 watts. It doesn't seem like so. I know I keep going on about it. But again, with that punch, it's got an energetic base, a powerful, punchy base to it. I know this is <laughs> mainly the speakers doing it, but it, I didn't know how capable my speakers were until I threw a Heagle through it. Now, because I put the 9.5 on, I had to try the 190 as well. Because if this can do that, what can the 190 do? <laughs> I wish, I sort of wish the 190 was in my price range because it's another step up again. It's another step up again, but the same sound signature. Leave an amplifier in the comments. It's £1,500 and you've heard this one. If you've not heard this one, then you, you can't really say, oh, that's amazing, it's better than this one. But if you have heard an amplifier at £1,500 and you've also heard the Eagle H95, please leave me a comment because I would love to hear the amp that beats this at £1,500 because I'm so excited at the moment. I really do believe I'm going to maybe try and grab one of these for myself. It's little old me. I, this is my opinion. Obviously, it's only my opinion. Everyone hears everything differently. But this is how I feel about the H95. It's one of, on my radar massively because of what it can sort of do. Best thing to do, go and have a listen to one. Pair it up with something else at a similar price point and just see how open this sound is and how neutral and natural the mids are and the highs are and the sparkle from strings and things like that. Like I said, with Nick Cave, it's got quite a low bass frequency. And sometimes... With the name amplifier especially, it was a little bit boomy every now and again. Again, it could be my positioning, but I don't like that bloat and I don't like that boominess. And I thought that was just because of the way my room set up and where I can put these speakers. But bringing in a Hegel 9.5, it got rid of that, it tightened the bass, it controlled everything beautifully. Again, I'm used to that little bit of bloat and room gain every now and again. And again, I thought it was my room, it was not. It was the amplifier. This controls it and makes me a lot happier for it. I don't have an Apple phone and apparently this has AirPlay on it. So you can stream to it from your iPhone. Uh, now I've not looked into that because I've just been playing records and listening to some streaming music uh, from an actual Wii Mini, funnily enough. That's what I use at home through a separate DAC. The digital to analog converter in this, where that sound's coming from, where that sound signature is coming from, it's fantastic at £1,500. That's all I'm going to say. So if you're like me at home, had a name amplifier, got a name amplifier, haven't got many digital inputs, this has got plenty. <laughs> Uh, so I can put my CD player into this and use the DAC on board, put the streamer into this, use the DAC on board. I can use so much stuff and I love this DAC. Again, realism, neutral, what I've been saying before. This was just a quick look video. Uh, again, I don't know if it feels like I'm rushed because I've got, I haven't got much time, but I wanted to get the video out there like I said before. Uh, so I want to just say thank you to Audio Lines Leicester. And again, if you're in the area, pop in 10% off. Um, just say Gareth or Fat Pigeon Audio Reviews did this amazing review on Eagle and I want to <laughs> I want to buy one or I want to listen to one and I'll get 10% off yay so thank you so much for watching I'm rambling now because I'm going to try thank you so much for watching and hopefully hopefully I'll see you in the next one